Welcome to Tracing Your Family Roots. My name is Arlene Sachs. This is Chuck Mason. And we're delighted to have Sharon Hodges with us again. Hi, um, both Chuck and, and Sharon have been presidents of the local societies. And today we're going to be talking about what to do with your material if your family couldn't <laughs> give a hoot about what you want to do with it. Um, so I, that's sort of an, a two-part thing, One, what, what, what you can do now, while, while there's well, while you have you're still, control, <laughs> yeah, and, and and the other is if they really really don't want to want it, what and and, and you know once you're, you're dead, you don't want to have all your hard work trashed. Yeah. So you want to make kind of you know uh, re leave the, leave re references or, or an idea of what you want done, but we should probably talk <coughs> about what what can you do now to get somebody interested in what you're doing. So where do you want to start with that? I guess. Try to get the kids interested if you're, if you're your own children, your grandchildren. Children. And it's hard to do that. Uh, I, I know a lot of times uh, people think of genealogy. I always talk about dragnet. You remember uh, Sergeant were... Friday, just the facts, <laughs> ma'am. So a lot of people think, okay, you're just going to get, I was born, I got married, I died, died, and I had this many kids. And when you start reading that time after time, <laughs> you know, it's boring. It is. It's totally boring, and nobody's going to want something like that. So the main thing is, we always tell people when they're starting to write about their family, is bring that person alive, make them, you know, more interesting to your reader. But one of the things that I did, um, whether my whether my son wanted it or not, yeah. <laughs> I started years ago, and I gave him a four generation, starting with my mother, his grandmother and then back three more generations. And he actually read it. I was surprised. And he came over later and he said, I want to know more about Grandma. They had a very, very special relationship. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to tell him? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? You know. So I thought about it for a while. And every time I thought about something about my grandmother or my mother, I just kind of made a, a note down in the computer. And I finally ended up, it was kind of my memories of her, and I got some of the things of her that I had together. And so it was like, you, you know, Christmas time, you read this much, mm -hmm. and then you get to open present one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> because it was about her, so it, it related to what he was reading. <coughs> uh, I had, from my aunt, had kept all of these church programs that they were all in. The church was, it was the depression time, so the church was your entertainment. Okay. And they would put on plays, actual plays, and, and my mother and her two sisters were always in them. So I had those that mm -hmm. I gave him. And then I had her high school yearbook where everybody was swell. Oh. <laughs> you know, we're talking 1940, everybody's swell. I was just waiting for Andy Rooney, or, or Andy... Um, Griffith. Uh, no, the yeah. little short guy. Oh, Mickey Rooney, Mickey sorry. Rooney. And uh, for him to come out, you know, yeah. isn't that swell, let's start a show kind of thing. But we did all of that. And by the time he stopped reading, my, my daughter-in-law went, can't your son cry? And there was, you know, there were the tears in my son's eyes at age 40-something. So that was something that got him interested. Now, whether or not that's going to keep him interested for other things, I don't know. But um, I threatened to come back and haunt him if he throws anything away once I'm dead, so, uh, you know. But that's one of the things. Give it, you, you can give it to them whether you think they'll like it or not. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, they may read it. Well, and, and I find that, you know, usually when the school project comes up, <laughs> yes, you yeah. hear from the nieces and nephews. <laughs> suddenly you're popular. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, my granddaughter. Suddenly, yeah, and so far, none of my nieces and nephews have pursued beyond that. What? Now, I do have one cousin who he's deceased but his two of his daughters two of the three daughters have from time to time wanted to know things and so I'll hear from them and then won't hear from them for a long time <laughs> well for my uh, mother-in-law's 90th birthday we put together it was really the boring kind of stuff it just the lists and stuff but it was something because their name was on it and um, since then a couple of, of Sid's nieces have uh, 
contacted us and they wanted to know something more or, you know, could, I, do I, could they have another copy or something like that. So, you know, even if they're not terribly interested at the, at the time that you give it, uh, there's other things, other you know, things later you on. Do. You know, scrapbooking for some people is a big, big deal. Personally, I don't have, my, my daughter-in-law was into it for a long time and she would have all the fancy stuff that went with it. And I, I'm, I'm back to what my mother did, you know, just give me the papers and I'll put them in the album. And, uh, but if, you, if somebody likes scrapbooking in your family, whether it's a niece, a nephew, a grandchild, yeah. whoever, do that with, with them. them. Say, help me put, you know, all these pictures together. Well, one of the things that I have seen, and it kind of gets away from that traditional scrapbooking, because one of my nephew's wives made one for my sister and brother-in-law, and I think she bought every, you know, additional thing. The, the scrapbook was, was probably about three inches wide on one side and about that <laughs> wide on the other with all the stuff, is the digital scrapbooks, yes. because you can put things in, and you can put stuff in there plain, but you can add things to in to enhance it. And, and that way you can give it to a lot of different people. But yeah. it's also great if you're not a computer person and you don't want to deal with this, but you've got someone in your family, one of the younger generations that is really good at doing mm -hmm. things like this. Oh, help me put these mm -hmm. pictures in. Now, where do I put stuff like this? Well, you know, you might get a little interest by that yeah. because they're not just getting what they think of as history with all the dates, these people are starting to become mm -hmm. real to them because they're getting the pictures, mm -hmm. they're getting the stories in a way that they enjoy right. putting something in. They think they're teaching you <laughs> to do the computer when you're really <laughs> teaching them about their family. So that is one of the things that you can go ahead and do. And there's a lot of companies, like Chuck was saying, that's got these digital albums that, you know, that let yeah, you put things in. I oh. saw one of the, the, that somebody did of a vacation that we were both on yeah. the, the same trip. And, you know, I put my pictures in, <laughs> in PowerPoint and, and, you know, then show them. Yeah. And she had put them in a scrapbook and then could write things with them. And it was really neat. It was yeah, a and, wonderful and job. And the, the one program, unfortunately, that I had from Creative Memories, Creative Memories went out of business. Oh. But it was very easy to pop things in there and, you know, type in your captions and everything. It, it really was, you know, you didn't have to be computer literate. literate to do it. You just needed somebody to load it and then you just open it up and start working with it and wasn't was well, we hard to do something work with on what the all. program some of the programs that you can use for something like that cuz i don't know yeah. oh gosh uh, yeah, there's that's... one that i uh, jan fox did and she brought it into uh, to the german sig at one point in time and i can't remember the name well, of we'll the company well we'll have to do a, a well, show on a show on that sometime i know that a number of people in the society use shutterfly to print the books out i don't know whether they actually have a program for putting it together. Well, the thing that have, I had really they liked must have a way for putting it together oh, if you can print yeah. it out. Yeah, I don't, I don't know just what they used and then sent it to them. But the thing that I liked about the one that I had from Creative Memories, you didn't have to send it to them. You could you print it, it out <laughs> yourself and put it together. That's what I. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. But something. if you're going to do something like that, you don't have to limit you, you or you can limit if you want to say okay. Um, you know, great grandma had this wonderful house that they lived in for generation after generation after mm. generation and maybe you know you took your kids there as, as a child do something on the house do the house history that's yeah. becoming a big thing if you have someone that's been in a family for a long time and you can put in deeds you can put in pictures yeah. you can put in stories of what happened yeah, uh, that, that's one of the things that I've seen where people will take not every document but interesting documents or items like I have my great grandparents the cream pitcher from their 25th mm -hmm. anniversary silver tea service set well it's one item but take a picture of it you can include a picture of yeah. the item well let's talk also a little bit about okay you're dead <laughs> what's going to happen <laughs> with your pa papers uh, and I, I think um, I think one of the things you mentioned in your thing is to make sure it goes to the right place. So maybe you donate it before you die, well, yeah. or, or specify in a will where you want the things to go. And and, and there's there's two facets of that too. Your there papers are. and your. Well, let, let's take the wills first. Okay. I mean, we make a will because we want to make sure that 
our granddaughter gets the diamond ring yeah. or the grandson gets whatever, you know, this kind of a thing. Things that we think are important that we want certain yeah. people to get. Well, <coughs> our genealogy it's to us is important and you don't have to give, matter of fact, you probably don't want to give the entire collection of what you've done because there's going to be certain lines that might go to one side of the family and other ones go to the other side of the family that these people aren't going to be interested in. So don't be afraid to divvy up what you've done. I, I have a feeling, you know, if somebody's, my, my, my son's saying, okay, she's going to give me all this stuff. I've seen the office. I don't want <laughs> all this stuff. <laughs> I don't, don't need it. that filing cabinet. I don't need all these books. So get it organized and get it ready yeah, ahead of time. Most people probably aren't going to want your research books that you've bought. So you want to look at maybe a local genealogical uh, society that's got a library such as Mount Vernon or uh, Prince George's County or you might want to look at your local history the, library. Another one is oh, the, uh, f uh, around here is the Fairfax yeah, library. Fairfax. Yeah, they they the, have the, a the, wonderful, yeah, the, huge collection Virginia of room Virginia Room. And what, Virginia the, room, what yeah. they do and Mount Vernon does if they already have the books, number one, if what you donate is in better shape than theirs, They'll keep that they'll <laughs> keep that, but then they will take and do a book sale and that brings money in that they can buy new books. So it's not that it's, it's going totally to lost. go totally lost or right. totally wasted. Well, I can add, add another one local, local for that is, is our it's synagogue. synagogue yes. uh, and it started out with one of the president, pre, the second president of the Jewish Genealogical Society. Uh, when he died, his wife, as a me memorial to him, started the Jack Klein Memorial Library, Genealogical Library. And <coughs> she, um, tried to, our emphasis is on German research, so that's, you know, she'll buy the German stuff occasionally, and we always watch for anything that we can pick up. Uh, we have this huge book sale. If I see something that's any way genealogically related. And you really want to find those, and they don't show up too often. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we found something on the Jews in, I don't know, some, some you know, wherever, whether it's a town or a country or something, boom, it goes, I, I take it out for our library. So that's a source. The Genealogical Society, you mentioned yours, and again, for Jews, it would be, around here, be the Jewish Genealogical right. Society. And the one nice thing about books is you don't have to worry about if you're living where your ancestor did. Of course not. Because yeah. we all have moved, yeah. and you need to have those reference books as to, you know, for where you are. So the books are good. These how-to books on how to do certain things, take a good look at those before you donate them because they can go out of date very quickly. Just like mm -hmm. a how to do something, you know, the dummies yeah. books for yeah. it, and you're way back, you find yeah. one for Windows 95, yeah, they, which is yeah. no good anymore. <laughs> so you do want to weed those kinds yeah. of things yeah. out, but there's a lot of others that you can donate locally. Yeah. Your papers, you might, where well, you've done your research, you might want to, and I think it's probably better to say, okay, great grandpa lived in northern New Jersey, I need to find something up in northern New Jersey where we'll take it because that's where people may look for records right. on him because it's so hard to find records where they've gone down three generations and the family Bible turns out to be in, in New Mexico when your family was from okay. New York City and it's it's more difficult to yeah. find those. You can find them but it's harder. Yeah, that, it, it just doesn't make sense to give to a local society something from another part, except there's two two places that I want to mention. For again, dealing with Jews because most of us didn't come over except in the last 200 years. Um, that uh, Library of Con well, uh, Yivo, which deals mostly with um, Yiddish materials, but we'll take it. Uh, I understand they have other things. And Leo Beck, which started out mostly German-speaking things. And Leo Beck started in Berlin uh, before mm -hmm. World War II. And both of them will collect and have Where many. Where are they? Both in New York, both in fact. New York. And both in the same building at this point <laughs> in New York. Um, but um, both of those would be places that... Uh, now, I would also give possibly my stuff to... Uh, uh, my local Jewish genealogy society again because that's that'll be a, would be you can make copies and yeah. just divide it. But when you've got a an ethnic group or a religious group, give it to you. You 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 at least have an idea of 
where I'm, wh where should I go look for some of these? So it makes it sometimes, at least that's a place to start. Well, yeah, a friend of, of mine is Chinese and she's wondering what to do with her. I said, is there There's any to kind be of something. Chinese organization, because they go back hundreds of oh, years. Yes. I mean, she's got stuff back 500 years, and, they, they, and you know, she's the only one that can read it at this point. Her and kids I, can't I would check it. West Coast on that to see if there's That's a good idea. I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. Uh, one, one of the other things, too, is to look at the facilities themselves, because if you have an area like in southern New Jersey, the Gloucester County Historical Society, when their library was founded, the original librarian thought of them as a regional library rather than a county mm -hmm. library for, for history because mm -hmm. Gloucester County was the parent of two or three other counties. And so she collected things from all the southern counties. So giving my stuff there would make more okay. sense than giving part of it to Atlantic County and part of it to Camden and part of it no, to Gloucester because you know they cover such a wide area yeah. in what they and, and, house. and you're right that you do have to look at the repository that you want to take you or you think you want to take, take your it. stuff because you want to find out first of all what do they want do they want very local where they go wider also how are they going to store your store. stuff? Is it going to stay in a basement for 60 years before they can get to you know, yeah. putting it somewhere Is it somewhere something or like they gave it, it to me and I don't know what to do with it, shove yeah. it to the side? Because so, they, they have to classify these things, give them the accession numbers, somehow be able to find them. And how are they going to store them? What are they going to do with them? Because the, there's some places that when you look on the websites, if we don't want this, we will throw it away. Oh, yeah, which yeah. to me is, I'm not taking it to you. Yeah. If you tell me you're going to look for another place that's willing to take it, okay. But you want to be very careful. And they'll only some repositories will only take certain items. Mm -hmm. Some and some yeah. don't want the uh, a physical artifact. They just want paper because they don't have any way to store anything else. Some may want your paper electronically. Some don't because they don't have the capability or the money to tra to, to change tra every time Somebody. that technology changes. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, is if you're going to give your stuff, print it out on archival paper. It's expensive, but it will last longer because it won't fade as quickly. What about the Library of Congress and the archives? I know that they have uh, uh, Library of Congress. Uh, again, you'd have to look on their website as to what they'll take, but of course they've got a huge manuscript room of all sorts of yeah. things, and it's not people who are just famous people. Yeah. It's about a lot of things. National Archives does not, as far no. as I know, take stuff no. like that. As no. far as I know, I, the, I thought they the, did. The, yeah, no. Only it's governmental. It's strictly coming in from government agencies okay. yeah. and departments. And so. And things. But you want to look at the DAR library. Are yeah, they DAR taking is things now? Place for, that for, might yeah. Yeah might take things because you know there you know people think that DAR only deals with revolutionary war and <laughs> so they, <wrong. laughs> they are so wrong you know they they because the revolutionary war has descendants and so yeah. you know they take anything that is going to possibly help people prove back to those revolutionary war but but descendants. they would want something where you they wouldn't want Somebody whose stuff doesn't go back to the revolutionary. Well, well that's where you have to look on the website yeah, for whatever you really they want. have to. But you know, like them. Chuck and I have client files. Yeah. What are we going to do with those? I have yeah. clients that come back to me, so I have not gotten rid of them because you never know. Yeah. Two, three, four, five years down the road, I've heard from people. Oh, hey, I'm yeah, ready to go yeah, back yeah. into this. So what do you do with them? So you want to find out, like I do Virginia, I do New Jersey, I do some Maryland. So where do I want to do those things? Where do I want to put them? And that's what you want to find out. Now, like Virginia Historical Society will take genealogists' work papers. Now, I don't know if they have a, a, a particular standard of who they will take or what they will take, but they will take mm -hmm. things, and that's one place to look at for uh, giving something if you're doing Virginia research, as long it's also the Library of Virginia will take a lot of things. I think New Jersey. Uh, what do you the mean the Library of Virginia? The, the li Library of Virginia is our archives. archives. You know, oh, some state some archives. Oh, okay, the archives for the Virginia. Have, okay. uh, some states have a state archives and a state library, two separate facilities, where in Virginia, and there are a few other states, the Library of Virginia also 
functions as the state archives. Yeah, it doesn't have archival yeah. stuff, and then it also yeah. has the library stuff. It's in one building. building. But if you go in to Richmond? Jersey, we have two different places yeah. to go. New York has two different places yeah. to go. And, you know, at one point I would have said, well, the New Jersey Historical Society, but, you know, they have kind of been so unstable. Yes. And <laughs> access to what they have has been so limited that I don't know. I don't know whether the Genealogy Society of New Jersey would take it or not. Because they actually put they their at things at Rutgers. At Rutgers, and there's access where the Historical Society, you have to make an appointment, and I don't yeah. know how easy it is. The last I heard it was getting more difficult to get an appointment yes. to go look at things. But we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there. There's another place I just thought of is the Hebrew Union College that also will, will take well, I was just very, say, very look old. Look at universities and colleges, colleges. Well, we yes, mentioned the, Rutgers because a lot of those have a huge um, local history or genealogy and special collections and you never want to, when you're researching, you don't want to overlook those yeah. types of now things. I, know, I don't know if they take, I mentioned Hebrew Union College, I don't know if they would take somebody's genealogy, but I know they have a lot of records, like very old cemetery records and things right. like that. Yeah. that uh, and, and that does point out one thing too, that you know, things may not necessarily end up where your family was. Yeah, so right. when you're doing research and you're looking at colleges or university collections, you can find things that you'd never expect to find in them. And they're putting so many things online now, yes. digitizing yes. things. So, but I want to go back real quick. Yeah. We were talking about putting a, a, a um, something in your will. Yeah. You don't actually, if you already have your will and you're happy with it and you don't want to have to redo it, you can do a letter to whoever your, your executor is and saying, I've spoken with, and speak to the person yeah, who's willing to take your stuff and make sure it gets distributed to where you want it to be. I've spoken with so and so. Please see that these boxes get to this person and they know what to do. But then you want to make sure you have done your homework ahead of time if you, you know, hopefully you can send it out to the repositories yeah. yourself, but if something happens that so, you can't, you've got someone who says, yes, I will see that they, you know, I will do this. Get somebody organized and that you will know will carry <laughs> through and not just say, okay, when she's gone, I'm sending it to the dump, um, <laughs> you know. Or another way to do it is a codicil to the yes, will, which do is the codicil. just in addition to the will and doesn't cost you as much as having a whole new will drawn up. To add up. Well, yeah, you could just add even a hand handwritten something or other that you keep with your will should, you know, it's not like it's something valuable money wise, wise. that they're going to fight yeah. over that. But the thing is, is, is make sure you know what you want to have done. We were just talking uh, before we started this show about someone who had called Chuck and said, you know, my wife has all of these books. What should I do with them? Give them to me. <laughs> and we're like, oh, well, let's go ahead and, and talk to Mount Vernon, you know. Uh, but that is something that you might want, you know, if you know you're, yeah. you're finished with your books, go ahead. I've already donated yeah. some. I have too. And, and I've I given a couple out. even to Mount Vernon that, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that uh, you know, dealt with the United States that yeah. I knew I, we yeah. weren't yeah. interested in. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you just want to make sure you know where it's going to go, but you've got to do your homework first. Yeah. So. Uh, We've got a few more minutes. We can. Uh, well, uh, one of the things we all have our own family heirlooms, however we define that. And Chuck does a whole thing on you know your family heirlooms. Yeah, amusing. But you know, what do you, who do you want to have those? Don't just say, I've got this plate. It's, it's a baby plate. You know, got the ABCs yeah. and all around it in the hunting scene. And when I got it from my mother, she didn't she didn't know a lot about the family but she had scotch tape to the back of it. Then she just said, my grandmother, my great grandmother, and what have you, who had this plate and who originally had it. Wow. So when I pass this on, what I want to do with it is now tell about these people because I know who lived with whom, I know how it came down, and when I give it to whoever in the family is gonna get it, and that's gonna depend on which of my grandchildren show most interest in yeah. things like this, <laughs> but it's gonna be like, okay, this is about the great grandmother, this is about your great great grandmother, and just tell a little bit about them so they know who the people were that owned the plate. So it's not just, oh, look, she's given me this plate. Yeah, well, it's you got, know, 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, a, a, it's something that my mother-in-law did, which we have started doing, although we haven't had too many people, is tell the kids right now, we're in good health, hopefully we'll live another 20, 25 years. Um, write your name on a sticky thing on the back of whatever it is you want. <laughs> yeah. and, and I mean, there's a couple of pieces of furniture that, that, have, that my kids have stuck it on, a picture that yeah. they've stuck it on. Which we wouldn't my, know otherwise. My other parents I did the same thing. My grandmother did it. And I then they never followed through with oh. the letter. Fortunately, the things that I wanted, none of my sisters wanted. But the other side of the coin, the cream pitcher I mentioned, you know, I thought that one of my sisters would want it. I told them the story and knew, you know, yeah. how my grandfather ended up with it. They all looked oh. at it like. Mm -hmm. I had to polish that. <laughs> well, that, that yeah. is true because it was as black as coal because my mother hadn't polished it and I don't know how long, but nobody wanted it. But you can do what I did as a child. I remember this sitting at the dining room table in my grandmother's house and she had this china closet with this rose platter in it. My grandmother was walking through. I was like nine years old. And I looked at her and I said, Grandma, when you die, if I don't get anything else, I want that rose platter. <laughs> I just yeah. Didn't think of it when she died, and my yeah. aunt put everything together. There came that rose There's platter with my name, name scotch taped to the back. back. Yeah. It's in my china closet. My husband and I each have. He's got something from his grandmother. We each have said, if the house burns down, there's a couple yeah. of things we're going to grab. Yeah, <laughs> and he's taken the plaque that's in the kitchen. I'm taking the platter, which I did do an interview with Net Search. I, only worth fifteen dollars. Who cares? <laughs> it's what I wanted, and I can picture it still. And. That's another way to say, okay, I'm interested in this, let me yeah. have it. Well, when Sid's cousin died, she had a set of uh, dishes and a little piece of paper was just lying on the top of the dishes that says, this belonged to my grandmother. Well, that was Sid's grandmother as well. So it, it's, it's uh, Limoges. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, from 19, 1898, I think is when she got married or something. Um, but, you know, at least we knew what it was from. Yeah. So. And last, very quickly, Label your photos. Yes. Yes. I have one that my aunt gave me on the internet. It says in the back, don't know and don't want to because he's the ugliest looking <laughs> thing you've ever seen. Uh, but also then add to that very quickly, add to that a little bit about the person that's yeah, in that good. picture. Yeah. So,